nor was a young man living in a fantasy world who was pretty strong for his age and very well liked by everyone in the town. He worked a job requiring manual labor, but even his boss was impressed by his work and never said a word against him as he was the best worker that he ever saw. One such day, after taking his daily wage, he was about to head back when he suddenly hears the voice of a woman screaming for help coming from a nearby cave. He immediately rushes over even after his boss tells him not to as it could be dangerous. He ignores everyone's warning and enters the cave only to see a girl wrapped in magical barbed wire while an adventurer's party face off against a giant demonic bull. Ever since he was a child, he always had to take care of his mother and the household because his father never came back with the milk. But he took it as a champ and started taking care of the house. His mom was sickly and mostly bedridden, so he made hot soup for her to drink while covered in soot and told her that he is going out to hunt some rabbits so she can have some protein for dinner. His mother cleaned his face while apologizing for not being able to give him anything in life. But Nor put on a brave face and told her he doesn't need anything anyways. Later that night he prepares a hearty rabbit stew for his mom, but when he comes back to feed her, she has already passed away from this world. Now poor Nor had no one to call family in this world as he buried his mother outside the house, but decided that he can't be weak and cry. He started living alone, tending to the garden, catching game, and taking care of the farm animals and studied inside his room after thoroughly cleaning it. He trained his body by catching wild fish, carrying heavy loads on the mountains and eating lots of protein every day. One night due to loneliness he climbs on top of a chair and takes out an old dusty storybook and starts reading it. This takes him way back as he remembers the time when his family was whole, and his father would tell him the tales about mighty adventurers who fought colossal dragons, learnt magic from wizards, lifted curses in the haunted forest, and fought against an army of elves. These stories always fascinated him as his father would tell him that the duty of an adventurer is to protect the weak people and make sure they are never hurt. This gives him inspiration to do something with his life and next day after tending to animals, he gets ready to leave his hovel and move towards the city to try and be an adventurer. He stays in the forest at night with a campfire and by the next morning he arrives at the beautiful city of his kingdom. He enters the giant main gate and is completely blown away to see the amount of people roaming around the markets, selling their goods and people buying swords and fruits at the same place. While walking he notices a man with a sword and decides to follow him which leads him to the adventurer's guild. He enters the establishment to find a big burly man at the reception instead of a thick furry girl. Disappointed, he tells the man that he is here to be an adventurer. But the man brushes him off by saying that this is no place for kids and he should think about his parents. Nor replies that his parents are dead which catches the fatty's attention, and he tells him to drop by the training school first. Nor seems confused, but fatty tells him that to join a guild, he needs to pick a school, go through basic training, pick his class and skills, and only after graduating can he become an adventurer. Nor is happy for the information and excitedly heads over to a school, with the aim to become the strongest swordsman. He enrolls and starts training in the way of sword. But even after several weeks while every other student starts awaking their magical potential, nor still says without any magical abilities. He keeps practicing and several months pass, by after which the instructor tells him that he doesn't have the talent and is wasting his time here. He tells him to join a different school as he is definitely not fit to be a swordsman. Nor doesn't give up and finds the school and decides to train as a warrior. He starts training under a big fat redhead, but even after going through intense training for several months, the redhead tells him that he doesn't have the talent for it, as all he has learnt is how to parry attacks. He then goes through several different schools, first as a hunter, but he gets kicked out. After that he tries to become a thief, but gets rejected as he has no talent for it. He then goes to become a magician but fails even in that so finally decides to become a healer, but fails and returns back disappointed. The fatty is shocked to learn that even after spending months at every school, he didn't learn a single thing, and tells him that unfortunately, there is nothing he can do to become an adventurer. Disappointed in himself, Nor leaves the city and returns back to his cottage in the woods, but he decides that he is not going to admit defeat and creates his own training setup with a sword. He decides to perfect the one move that he learnt which was to parry and deflect attacks aimed at him. He spent days perfecting it day and night, and finally after a year of rigorous training, he became strong enough to parry 10 attacks at once. He decides to keep training and three years pass by after which he manages to parry 100 swords at once, but gains no new skills. 
He keeps training endlessly to the point where his sword breaks. Fourteen years pass by as he realizes that in these past years he has trained every single day and is now able to parry 1,000 swords at once without fail. Despite putting this much hard work, he doesn't gain any new skills, but still decides to head over to the Adventurer's Guild once more. This time he meets with a young girl who looks at his skill set, only to advise him to visit the training school. Nor tells him that he has already been through them, which surprises the girl, as she tells him that he doesn't have any skills to make him an adventurer. Nor gets disheartened once again, when the fatty comes out and barely recognizes him. They sit down to talk over some beer. When Nor tells him about his training for the past years, fatty tells him that there are ranks in an adventure from E to S, but even to become E rank, you need at least one skill, which Nor doesn't have. Nor gets sad, but Fatty tells him that not many people know, but there is another rank below E, which is F. There are some limitations for F-rank adventurers as they can't take kill quests or work in the forests outside the city. They can only take odd manual labor jobs in the city, but no one would really want to do that. To his surprise, Nor immediately accepts and finally gets his adventurer's license. He starts doing odd jobs around the city like carrying heavy loads, finding lost cats, and keeps training every single night. He also takes nursing jobs and takes care of old people by cooking for them. While doing all this he keeps training and seems to be happy working as an adventurer who can actually help people. Finally we come back to the present where the giant bull walks towards the adventurers and smashes the leader with his axe, who flies into the wall. Nor quickly checks him, only to find out that he is dead. He looks back to see the other guys getting skewered by the bull as he kills every single person in the area effortlessly. Before moving his eyes onto the white-haired girl, Nor's body immediately jumps into action as he throws a rock at him and diverts the attention before running away. The monster chases him with surprising quickness, and Nor realizes that he can't run away. So he turns around and parries the bull's attack. To his surprise, the parry was so strong that the bull gets blasted into the wall. It immediately recovers and jumps through the dust to attack Nor. But he is able to parry the attacks again and again as he realizes that if he misses a single parry, he is as good as dead. He tries to find an opening, but realizes that he doesn't have a single offensive skill to actually land an attack. His swords start chipping, but the demon turns towards the girl and rushes towards her. Nor immediately uses his feather step ability, which increases his speed to appear before the bull and deflects the attack once again at the cost of his own sword. He remembers his father telling him that an adventurer defends the weak even at the cost of his own life. So he stands his ground even with a broken sword. And this time when the monster attacks, Nor parries with all his might, which deflects the axe so much that it bounces back and chops the head of the bull cleanly before getting stuck in the rocks. The girl is utterly shocked as blood splatters all around the area, but the magical jabber wire disappears from her body. He falls to the ground, looking at his sword which shatters and jabber how close of a call it was. The girl immediately thanks him for saving her life and jabber his name. But Nor replies that his name isn't worth remembering and walks back outside. He walks through the streets, thinking about how he almost got killed by a giant cow and realizes that he needs to train even ointment if he gibber to truly become an adventurer who can protect people. After Nor was gone, the dungeon gets filled with the white-haired woman's guards as she turns out to be Lynn Clay of a noble family. Her personal guard arrives and watches the dead minotaur being inspected by the scientists, while Clay's guards lay dead on the ground covered by a white cloth. She immediately apologizes for not being here for her protection, but she tells him not to worry about it as it wasn't her fault. A little while later, another man named Dar enters and asks whether she is fine and details about what happened here. The news about the attack reaches her brother Ray, who is completely shocked to find out that her sister was attacked by such a monster. He asks Dar whether he has any idea what a minotaur was doing on the surface when it is supposed to stay in the innermost depths of the dungeons. Dar bows down and answers that this was definitely an assassination attempt as they found out that the ring Lin recently bought from a merchant. He claims that the ring got tested by a magician and he revealed that it had a monostone of 90% purity which is extremely hard to find. And that was the reason why the Minotaur attacked her group. Ray still seems unclear as he doesn't understand why a Minotaur would want a manastone. But Dar reveals that he believes the Manastone was cursed by the neighboring enemy kingdom of Derry, who is known for practicing dark magic. Ray agrees with this assumption as lately Derry's army has been harassing them on the outskirts, and now such a brazen attack on Lin without even trying to hide it, proves that they want a war. Ray then asks Dar about the man who saved Lin's life, 
Badar claims that they know nothing about the man, apart from the fact that he killed the Minotaur with his broadsword in a matter of minutes, but escaped quickly afterwards without even telling his name to Lin. The next morning Nor goes into the guild, as if nothing happened when the fatty immediately walks up to him asking if he is fine. Nor seems confused, so fatty explains that last night a deadly monster emerged in the caves near his construction site. And that's why he was worried. Nor has no idea that Fatty is talking about the Minotaur that he killed last night, as he thought it must be a low-level cow monster since he managed to defeat it. The Fatty tells Nor that he is lucky that he left beforehand, because even a former a ranked adventurer like him couldn't have done anything against such a strong beast. Nor wipes the dirt from his face and wonders what kind of monster could it be that even an a ranked adventurer is scared of it and then thanks the god that he only faced off against a giant cow. Nor asks what happened to the monster and Fatty replies that some mystery man ended up killing the beast in a single blow, which really shocks Nor as he wonders how strong that man must be to kill such a monster, not realizing that he is the man Fatty is talking about. Later, Fatty gives him his pay for the day, but tells him to get a real job as well, otherwise he won't be able to earn much. Before he could reply though, a hooded figure appears behind him and calls him out. Nor turns around only to find the white-haired girl he saved yesterday, and asks how did she find him. She apologizes for following him, but claims that she used her long-distance detection skill to find him. He asks whether she learnt it from the thief schools, but she claims that she is from the magician branch, but has equal skills in all the six branches. Lin notices that she is drawing way too much attention and asks Nor whether they can talk somewhere more private. But before he could reply, Fatty grabs him and asks what the hell did he do. Nor replies that he didn't do anything wrong, while Lin deploys a soundproof barrier and asks him to come with her. They both exit the guild and walk through the streets to a desolate area, where she tells him that she really wanted to thank him as not only did he save her life, but he also saved the life of a lot of citizens. Nor still doesn't know how strong he is, so he claims that she is so talented, and he must have ruined her plans by butting his head in between. She tells him that it's not true. In fact, if he didn't come to her aid, she would have probably died there. She then claims that she wants to reward him for his help. But Nor immediately replies that her gratitude is enough. Lin, however, is not so easily pushed away. And she tells him that she is a person of status here, and even her father would like to thank him personally. He again refuses which shocks Lin who has no idea why a man would refuse a reward from a noble. She asks whether there is anything troubling him, and even claims that her father will give him a lot of land if he wants it. But Nor keeps rejecting her offers. He tells her that he doesn't need anything from her, which makes her tear up, as she feels obligated to repay him for his help. She tells him that she won't move from this place till he accepts her gratitude, which reminds him of the time when he did the same to one of the instructors of the healing school branch. He finally gives in and agrees to meet with her father, but refuses to take any over-the-top rewards. This makes her happy enough, and she uses magic to conceal both herself and him as they walk through the city back to her mansion. When they finally reach her house, Nor is completely shocked as he has never seen such a big and lavish place. They walk by the guards and enter inside, while Nor wonders whether this girl is a noble if she is so rich. On the way they end up running into her personal guard Ani, who looks at him suspiciously and asks who he is. Lin tells her that this is the man who saved her life, and she immediately softens up, claiming that she will take them to the Lord. They follow Ani through the gallery when Nor spots a guy wearing yellow armor waiting by the window, and he immediately jumps into action spinning his lance before pointing it towards Nor, asking who the hell he is. Ani tells him to back off as he is Lin's guest, but this Pikachu-looking asshat ends up making fun of Nor for looking poor. Ini introduces him as Gil and asks him to accompany them into the room as she still doesn't fully trust Nor. They wait outside the hall as Lin's father Clay was talking to his son about the chances of war increasing, as they remember the last time they met with the King of Derry, who ended up insulting them and threatened to wage war against them if they didn't give them access to all the dungeons in their kingdom. Soon the door opens and they all enter the hall and while both Ini and Gil drop to one knee in front of their lord, but Nor has no clue who the man seated on the high seat is, so he simply walks ahead without a single care along guide Lin. She introduces him to her father, claiming that this is the man that saved her life, and immediately the lord got up from his seat and moved towards Nor thanking him for saving the life of his girl. Nor tells him that he is not a noble and has never talked to nobles before so he doesn't know how to properly behave. But the lord doesn't seem to mind as he laughs and shakes his hand, before asking him to choose anything that he wants for a reward. Nor immediately declines, claiming that he neither wants land nor gold. The Lord seems confused but tells him that if he wants, 
he can have half the treasure of the oldest dungeons in the world that falls in their kingdom. Ray advises against it as the treasure is worth more than a small country's GDP, but to their surprise, Nor refuses it as well, claiming that he doesn't want any kind of gift from them. The Lord looked confused as to what sort of man would refuse such a gift. He then walks over to his seat and takes out the giant black sword behind it, which used to be his personal weapon during his adventuring days. Ray seems a bit worried, but his father tells him that it's fine as the sword should be used in battlefield and not kept as a decoration. He hands it over to Nor, who grabs the handle and immediately realizes that the weapon is heavier than anything that he has ever used. Nor thinks that it is just a random second-hand sword, so he decides to accept it as a gift, as he wanted all of this to end quickly so he could go back to work. The Lord asks him to swing it once, and to his surprise, Nor simply used one hand to swing the sword so strongly that it created wind blast around them. Nor looks at the Lord and tells him that it's a bit heavy, but he will manage, which makes Clay laugh as he can't believe this man just swung a two-handed great sword with a single hand. Clay asks whether he would like to train Lin a little bit as it is getting very dangerous nowadays, which puts a smile on the girl's face, but Nor immediately declines, claiming that there is nothing he could teach her and decides to leave. On the way through their gallery, he looks at the sword once again and realizes that it is the same size as the drainage ditch, which means that he can use it to scoop out dirt from the ditch much more efficiently. Before he could leave though, he gets stopped by Gil who puts a lance to his face, telling Nor that he wants to see whether he is worthy of that sword. While Nor wonders whether he will ever be able to leave this mansion to get back to work or not, Gil leads Nor through a hallway, and Nor wonders where is he being taken, because he just wants to go back to work. To his surprise, Gil brings him to a training arena for a mock duel between them. This shocks Nor, because he has not sparred with anyone since his days in training school. Gil picks up a wooden pole for practice, and he reveals that he is quite famous in the capital, and then asks Nor to choose his weapon as well. Nor thinks this is an excellent chance to learn from a veteran, and he chooses a regular wooden sword. He doesn't think he will be much of an opponent to Gil, but he is still planning to give it his all. Gil attacks first, thrusting his staff at Nor, who easily dodges his attacks. He can see how effortless and efficient Gil's moves are, which reveals how much he is trained, but for some reason, he appears to be moving very slow to Nor. He believes that Gil is just holding back his strength out of consideration for a noob like him. Nor calls a timeout and tells Gil that he doesn't need to hold back to such an extent, so Gil decides to get serious with him. He launches his attacks at a much higher intensity this time, but it is not fast enough to overwhelm Nor, who finds openings in Gil's defense every time he misses an attack. On the other hand, Gil is frustrated that his strikes are not connecting with Nor. So he decides to use a complex attack where he changes his trajectory at the last moment, forcing Nor to jump, and then uses it as a chance to strike him down just as he lands. However, despite all that, Nor is able to dodge his attack, and he asks Gil to increase the pace even more because he is comfortable with the current intensity. Gil was already using his full abilities, so hearing those words hurt his ego. Nor also finally realizes that he might actually be stronger than Gil, but then suddenly, the elite guard uses his special move on Nor. The attack reaches dangerously close, but when the dust settles, Nor is not in front of Gil. He had dodged the attack and moved to the side. But after seeing the destructive power of Gil's attack, he immediately declares that he no longer wishes to fight. Nor leaves the palace with that. But his skill has caused an uproar among other knights, who can't believe that he could dodge their captain's special attack. Some of them believe that Nor only survived because Gil was holding a practice spear. Otherwise a genius like him could easily defeat anyone he wants to. Hearing those words take the depressed Gil down the memory lane. He was always talented with a spear and traveled all around the kingdom seeking powerful people and defeating them. There was no one who could even give him a proper challenge, and Gil got bored. He went to the capital and joined the knights so that he could fight monsters since they were stronger than humans. However, even monsters were no match for his strength and skill, and his boredom persisted. Then one day, as he was lazing around, the master of the sword school came to see him, because he was the one who trained him in the early days. Gil ranted out about how boring it is to be so strong, and wished there were more people as strong as the master so that he could have fun fighting them. The master only told him that someday, someone who will surpass him will emerge among his students, and Gil hoped that the person makes his appearance while he is still alive, because that may be the only way to relieve his boredom. Now, as Gil thinks about the man who killed a minotaur with a single strike, his mind is full of conflicting thoughts. He knew from the first moment that Nor was an interesting person, 
but he couldn't sense anything remarkable about his strength. However, when they sparred, he found that Nor was much stronger than he looked. When Nor told him to go even faster, he used his special attack on him that was even faster than the speed of sound knowing full well that no human can survive it. When Nor dodged the attack, Gil felt defeated, and to top that off, Nor ended the fight with that. Gil believes that he did so to not embarrass him in front of his troops, and before going, he told him that he was looking forward to their next meeting, which was Nor's way of telling him to get stronger. Now, Gil thinks that he has finally found someone who can make his life a bit more fun. On the other hand, Nor has no idea how highly Gil rates him. He used his body strengthening and feather step skill earlier to evade his ultimate attack at the last moment. And if he was only one moment late, he would have died. He thinks Gil adjusted the speed of his attack on purpose so that he could only barely dodge it. And he is grateful to him for showing him that he still needs a lot of training. The next day, Nor begins cleaning drains using the treasured sword he received from the king and he is absolutely stunned by how good the sword performs. Later, he is sitting in the forest because his job at the construction site was suspended because of the Minotaur incident. He wonders how can he kill time till the job is available again, and he also wants to put the huge sword to good use. He thinks that it may make a splendid ore, or a pizza shovel, or even a grill plate, but he lacks the resources to get other items needed to start those businesses. He tries using his fire magic, and thinks that it is too weak to be any good for starting a barbecue. He hears footsteps behind him and turns around to find Lin there, who has come looking for him specifically. Nor asks how can he help her, and Lin requests him to let her be his apprentice so that she can learn from him while serving him. She is eager to serve him with anything he wants, but Nor refuses, saying that he cannot teach her anything, and he is self-sufficient in everything. Lin tries offering him a monetary reward for his training, but Nor clearly tells her that he wants nothing. She keeps insisting that she will be helpful to him, and Nor fails to clearly get his point through to her. To prove that she is qualified to learn from him, Lin decides to show off her magic power. She creates icicle lances and shoots them towards herself, and then burns them off using a powerful fire spell. Next, she cuts down a huge tree with a small dagger using another skill, and then uses a magic sword skill to blast a tree behind Nor. She is confident that Nor will accept her as his apprentice with this display, but he still refuses to do so. He has now realized that Lin is rating him too high, and wonders how can he convince her that he is nothing compared to her. He decides to show her his skill, and creates a tiny fireball to prove to her that he is a loser, and Lin is shocked to see it. She begins walking home with that and thinks about the tale of the talentless boy that all the teachers used to narrate. That time, Lin used to think of just a cautionary tale because she didn't think that any 12-year-old boy could endure the harsh training of all six schools for full term when even seasoned warriors found it hard to stay there for so long. One day, the strongest magician who runs the magic school showed her his tiny fire skill, and then increased its size to show off his mastery. The magician said that it takes decades of practice to increase the size of the tiny flame skill. That is why, when Nor showed Lin his tiny fire today, she was left speechless because it was much larger than the strongest magician in the world. He told her that this is all he can manage, and his skill in other branches is at the same level as well. Only Lin knew that the size of the small fire spoke lengths about Nor's ability, and she concluded that he was a peerless master in the other branches as well. Now, she is ashamed that she was proud of her high-level skills that she just learned recently. She thinks that despite being exponentially stronger than her, Nor never boasts about his power, and he does even the most mundane tasks to help others. She thinks that Nor's mind and character as strong as his body, and he cannot be phased by anything. As the princess, she will have to lead the kingdom alongside her brother one day, and for that, she needs to be strong. She wants to learn how to become strong from Nor, and for that reason, she once again reaches out to him, just as he is coming out from a restaurant after having dinner. Lin tells him that she fully understands how immature and vain she was, and now, she wants to learn from him even more. She believes that his strength will become the foundation of their kingdom's peace and prosperity, so she has accepted him as her master. However, Nor is deeply troubled by it, and he just wants to go home. Meanwhile, Lin's elder brother Ray is in his office, wondering why his father chose to give away the legendary black sword to a complete stranger. He recalls how his father ventured into the dungeon in his youth along with the masters of the six job schools. After a very long exploration, he obtained the Black Blade, which was instantly regarded as their most valuable artifact. It was made with an unknown metal that was harder than anything else they knew about. It was practically indestructible with neither physical attacks nor magic managing to scratch it. 
However, everyone wondered how could such a powerful sword be in a terrible condition. Ray believes that the value of the Black Blade far surpasses any treasure they have, and it is not something his father would give to a man he did not see something special in. He knows that his dad can sense the dangers that are starting to envelop their kingdom, and he probably entrusted the sword to Nor to say that he is pining all the hope to save the kingdom on his shoulders. Even Ray believes that Nor is not an ordinary person, and when time comes, he will become their trump card. At the same time, Nor is in the city, eating a delicious meal from a roadside stall, with Lin by his side. She has completely gotten into the role of his apprentice, and he wants to tell her that he is not worth being her teacher. He thinks that if they head to the guild, she will see how pathetic he is and stop following him around. Once they reach the guild, the fatty immediately questions Nor why is he with a princess. Nor says that it is complicated, so Fatty decides to let them have their privacy, even though Nor badly wants some advice from him. Fatty then asks them what they want, and Nor says that they would like a commission for two people. Since Lin is a B-rank adventurer, Fatty says that if she joins a party with Nor, they can go outside the city to hunt goblins. Nor is flabbergasted on hearing this, because he has only heard stories about how real adventurers use goblins as their practice dummies. He can't believe that the day he finally does the same has come, but then he realizes that he is taking advantage of Lin's high rank even though he wanted her to leave him alone just now. Nor finds Lin staring at him, so he feels terrible and thinks that she has seen how greedy and shameless he is. She asks him if anything is wrong, and he asks if she is fine with this arrangement because he is relying on her rank. Lin has no problem with that, and she tells Nor that he is free to use anything that belongs to her. Nor feels a little pathetic, but he doesn't care because he can live out his dream finally. He marches out of the guild with determination, but then Fatty calls him back because he doesn't even know where the goblins are. Fatty completes the paperwork and then tells Nor not to push his luck because even if goblins are low-level monsters, they can still be dangerous. He points out their location on the map and remarks that lately their numbers have decreased. He asks Nor to collect right ears of the goblins he kills for his reward and then sends him off. Nor and Lin enter the Forest of Beasts, and Nor is surprised because he has never seen this part of the forest before. He tells Lin about how trees are different in the south where he comes from, and she gives him a brief lecture about ecosystem. Nor then asks her about goblins, and Lin says that they are small monsters who prey on fruits and small creatures, but their numbers increase quite rapidly. If the numbers increase beyond a limit, the forest can no longer supply them with fruit so they attack human settlements. That is why, the Adventurer Guild sends people to keep their number on the low side, but forbids them from being wiped out because goblins are beneficial for the ecosystem too. Nor is impressed by Lin's knowledge, and thinks that he has even less he can teach her. They keep walking towards the denser parts of the forest, but even with her detection skills, Lin cannot find any trace of goblins. However, she senses something at a distance and tells Nor that they should check it out. The deeper they go into the forest, the darker it becomes and the mist surrounding them also begins to thicken. Once they reach the spot where Lin had sensed the monster, they find nothing. She remarks that the presence of the monster simply vanished, but Nor senses something unusual in the rustling of the leaves. He looks ahead and finds the half-eaten body of a goblin floating in the air, and it suddenly falls to the ground. Lin immediately uses a spell to uncover whoever is behind it, and a huge green monster with a red crystal on his forehead becomes visible. Nor is shocked and asks who is this cousin of the Incredible Hulk, and she tries telling him that it is a goblin emperor. However, she stutters, and Nor only hears that the monster is a goblin. He freaks out, thinking that this is the normal size of a goblin, and if real adventurers can use them as practice material, they must be really amazing. The goblin emperor uproots trees with his bare hands and roars loudly, terrifying Lin. She knows that even a goblin king is a calamity-class monster that is not easy to deal with, and the goblin emperor is leagues stronger than it. She knows that goblin emperor is not a natural monster, but an artificial one, which is created through taboo experiments. She is terrified of it, and Nor thinks that even though she is powerful, she must never have fought monsters before. He tells her not to worry about anything, because their opponent is just a goblin. His words give her courage, and she thinks that maybe Nor predicted that a monster of this level was already here, which is why he was so excited to come here. She takes her stance next to him, certain that she can defeat the Goblin Emperor alongside her teacher. The Goblin Emperor charges at them with a tree trunk in each arm. 
nor blocks his first attack and parries it, and manages to parry the second attack too. After that, the Goblin Emperor tries to push him into a corner with brute force, but Nor still overwhelms it with a parry. This disbalances the Goblin and Lin tries hitting it with wind and ice magic, but the Goblin is remarkably agile and dodges all her attacks. The Goblin Emperor yeets a tree towards her, but Nor parries it. He asks Lin if she is fine, and she tells him to keep his attention on the Goblin who is throwing more trees towards him. Nor continues to parry them, but he is getting tired now. Lin notices that whatever little injuries the Goblin Emperor is receiving are healing unnaturally fast, and she believes that the red mana stone on its forehead is the reason behind that. Suddenly, the Goblin Emperor throws three trees towards Nor at once, and he panics because he won't be able to parry all of them at once. Luckily, Lin comes in clutch with a powerful wind magic that blows away all the trees. Her attack damaged the Goblin, but it heals from the injuries instantly. Now Lin is certain that they need to get the mana stone out of its head to defeat it, but Nor doesn't think they can manage to do that. Suddenly, he gets an idea, and he asks Lin to shoot the powerful wind magic from earlier at his back. She warns him that the spell is powerful enough to tear castle walls, but Nor plans to take the blow using his black blade so that he can accelerate towards the goblin emperor faster that it can react. Lin agrees and shoots his back with the powerful wind blast. Nor is Sen speeding ahead, and despite using the physical enhancement skill, he still breaks a bone. He dodges the tree thrown at him by the goblin, and then quickly heals himself, before jumping high up to deliver the finishing blow. The goblin emperor tries attacking him with a tree, but Nor's powerful strike cuts through the tree and hits the mana stone on the goblin's head. The mana stone pops out of its socket and the goblin screeches in pain as Nor is sent rolling on the ground. He gets up and sees the goblin writhing in pain and then Lin comes to him with the monastone she has safely retrieved. Nor then asks her if she can deal with the goblin by herself now, and she accepts his request. He doesn't feel good to see the suffering monster, so he asks Lin to make it as peaceful as possible. She affirms, and then ironically proceeds to burn the goblin emperor to death. Nor pays the monster his sympathies, and then thinks that he has had enough of goblin hunting for a while. He thinks that he is still too weak to even face fodder-level monsters, so he should train harder before coming to the forest again. Later, the secret agents serving Ray bring the mana stone to him and report him about the Goblin Emperor case. Just by seeing the purity and size of the mana stone, Ray knows that it is the work of the Magic Empire. He also learns that Lin and Nor managed to defeat the enormously powerful monster with just a few scratches. However, what shocks him the most is how could a huge monster like that be brought into their kingdom without their guards and secret service noticing it. He asks his agents to look out on such irregularities across the nearby cities and dismisses them. At the same time, Nor and Lin are reporting to Fatty as the guild, who asks Nor how he feels after his first monster hunt. Nor is still holding fast to the belief that he just fought a normal goblin, so he tells Fatty that it was harder than he thought it would be, and they only won thanks to Lin. She becomes a fan of his modesty, and Fatty also thinks that Nor just watched from behind while the princess fought the goblin. He gets a bit suspicious on hearing about the red mana stone on its forehead and asks if it was really a goblin. Nor turns to Lin for confirmation, and she replies that since her teacher called it a goblin, it was just that and nothing more. Fatty is content with thinking that it was a rare monster and then asks them to hand the proof of their kill. Nor and Lin suddenly realize that they forgot to collect the goblin's ear before burning it whole. Soon after that, Ray gets reports of odd things happening in nearby cities and villages. In some places, people are hearing strange sounds at night and animals are cowering in fear as they return from the forest, while in other places, the number of disappearing pets is increasing as the forests nearby have suddenly gotten more silent. Ray believes that this could be the sign of unnatural monsters who have snuck into their kingdom. He immediately orders his men to send search parties to each of the locations and put everyone with detection spells at work. He also orders them to summon the six masters of each school, because they may need their help. Once his subordinates are gone, Ray shows his frustration, as he throws the papers in the air, wondering if the Magic Empire really wants their dungeon so badly that it is going to such lengths. On the other hand, Nor and Lin are enjoying some street food with their reward money. Ultimately, Fatty gave them the money for slaying one goblin without proof out of his pocket because it was Nor's first conquest mission. After they are done eating, Lin tells Nor that she will be heading home now, and he is relieved that he is finally going to get some peace. 
Just then, Ray comes there looking for his sister. As he sees Nor, he immediately makes a request, asking him to visit a town in the mountains tomorrow morning. He says that Lin will also join him, and he will make all the arrangements as well as pay him a good fee. Ray doesn't reveal the exact business he has in that town, but Nor accepts it because he seems earnest. The next day, he rides the carriage that will take them to their destination. Riding a carriage for the first time in his life was the main reason Nor accepted Ray's quest, and he enjoys every moment of it. On the other hand, Lin appears quite gloomy, and he asks her if she is not interested in the beautiful scenery outside. His attention goes back outside, and he thinks that once he becomes a proper adventurer, he will leave the city to travel. Lin suddenly apologizes for her brother pulling him into this, but he tells her that it is fine because he is getting paid for it. This spoils Lin's mood even further. This morning, Ray had explained that their mission was to go into the town of Tauros on the other side of the mountain, and if nothing happened after staying there for a while, they should head to their neighboring country, the Holy Kingdom of Mithra. He told Nor that as long as nothing happens, he can consider it as a paid vacation. Now, as Lin thinks about that, she wishes that nothing really happens. Her bodyguard Ani tells her that she doesn't need to worry about anything because she is here to protect her. The truth is, Rei gave her a top secret mission before going. He said that their kingdom is going to face a great danger soon, and if it falls, Ani should take Lin and seek shelter in the country of Mithra. Ini was shocked and asked if Lin knows about this, and Ray revealed that he had not told her anything because she would surely oppose it. He was really concerned about Lin's safety, and told Ini that she was the only one he could trust with that. Back to the present, the group is taking a break and Ini apologizes to Nor for dragging him into this. She promises to keep him safe, but he tells her that there is no need for it because he is good at running away. Ini insists, saying that there will be no need to run because she has her shield with her. Nor says that he can't see anything. So Ini decides to show her abilities to him. She creates a holy shield with her special ability and tells Nor that if anything happens, he should hide behind the shield. He is impressed and then recalls how Lin was saying that Ini is on the same level as the spear user Gil he fought. He has heard that Gil is strong enough to defeat a dragon. And if Ini is on the same level as him, Nor thinks that they are too strong compared to someone like him who struggled fighting a mere goblin. He thanks Ini, saying that he is really talented. But those words remind her of her childhood. She lived in an orphanage, and one day, she suddenly activated her power. Her friend was curious about it and tried touching it, only to get her finger cut. The caretakers called the principal, and soon, the magician master, the redhead warrior, and the priest came to the orphanage as well. They asked Ini to show her abilities, and the magician declared that it was a gift from heaven, which only the rarest people can receive. He told the young Ani that her power could be a blade that could cut through anything or a shield that could block any attack depending on how she used it. Ani was bothered by these heavy words, but the redhead warrior told her that he would train her to use her power correctly. He took her in as a student, and while Ani trained her ability with him, she kept distancing herself from everyone in the orphanage out of fear of hurting them. However, that was only till she met Nor and learned his name. She had heard that name a lot from the redhead warrior, who was her master as well as adoptive father. One day, as they were hunting monsters in the forest, another warrior told the redhead that a huge group of monsters is approaching them. The redhead was lost in thought, and he mumbled that he wished Nor was here at times like this. Ini was curious to know about the person her father acknowledged, but more than that, she was jealous of him. Ever since she met Nor, her jealousy has gotten worse, and she wants to shake that feeling off so that she can protect Lin without any weakness. Just then, Nor notices something moving through the wheat fields and leaving a strange trail. As soon as Lin hears this, she asks the carriage to be stopped. She uses her magic to reveal whatever is hiding in the field, and it turns out to be a huge frog-bat hybrid monster. At the same time, numerous monsters attack the capital at once, and Rei commands to deploy the warriors, swordsmen and hunters to hunt as many as they can, while the thieves are to help the civilians evacuate. King Clay recalls the words of Emperor Derry, who told him that they would regret not accepting his conditions. He believes that Derry is behind this attack, and Ray agrees. He believes that this might just be the starting, and they should get ready for much worse attacks. Clay asks him about the Six Masters, and Ray replies that all of them are already deployed to face powerful monsters. While the Redhead Warrior and his troops face against three goblin emperors in the forest, the sword master hunts down lizard monsters in the city. The hunters, magicians, healers and thieves are also at work, but the king fears that they have spread them out too thin. On the other hand, just as Lin uncovers the concealment spell on the black dragon, it attacks the girl in front of him. Lin and Ini recognize the monster as the black death dragon, 
That is incredibly dangerous, but Nor charges towards it without wasting a moment to protect the girl. He parries the dragon strikes with his black blade, and Ini remarks that the girl also appeared out of nowhere just as Lin broke the concealment spell around the dragon. Lin knows that it can mean only one thing. The girl is definitely a demon with power to control monsters. Her brother had once told her about demons, who look like humans, but their powers and nature are closer to monsters. He told her that demons are a vile race who destroyed an entire kingdom once, and because of that, humans hunted them down. Their descendants still live on and Rei was certain that they must hold deep grudges against humans. Back to the present, Ini believes that the girl is definitely a demon who brought the dragon to the city. When Lin used her spell, it must have caught the girl by surprise, and when her control over the dragon was weakened just for a second it attacked her. Ini believes that they should not save someone like her, but Nor rushed to help her even without thinking about it. As she sees him still fighting against the dragon, she wonders what is he thinking. Lin says that in any case, they need to help Nor. But Ini stops her, saying that it is already too late for him. Nor thinks that the dragon is quite slow and weak compared to the goblin he fought, and he thinks that if he just buys time, Lin will help him out. Suddenly, the dragon shoots its breath at him, and Nor decides to parry it because the girl will get hit if dodges. However, that was the worst mistake he could make as the attack explodes, releasing a very powerful poison in the air. Nor immediately starts vomiting black blood, and the bloody tears start flowing from his eyes too. He realizes that he was just hit by an incredibly deadly poison, and it seems too late because he has started to lose consciousness. He falls to the ground, and Lin tries to reach him. But Ini blocks her way with a barrier, saying that she will only get herself killed if she goes near the Black Death Dragon. She creates a barrier by combining her shields, hoping to keep Lin safe till she gets to safety. Lin requests her to let her help Nor, but Ini refuses because her greatest priority is to protect the princess. The dragon suddenly launches another round of poison breath, and Ini immediately adds more shields to her barrier. She tells the princess to focus solely on her survival. But Lin still uses her purification magic in hopes to save Nor. Her magic is not strong enough to do that, and as the black poison covers everything, Ini apologizes to Nor that she could not save him. Suddenly, a part of the black dragon's claw hits her barrier, and the poison cloud disappears. Nor is fighting against the dragon despite being severely poisoned. Seeing him like this, Ini realizes why the redhead warrior wanted Nor's help in troubling situations. She thinks that he is the ultimate shield who will protect people even at the cost of his life. But she thinks that he is not going to make it out alive. Meanwhile, Nor keeps on parrying the dragon's attacks. He counters it poison breath too, but gives the dragon an opening to attack him. He blocks the attack, but that is all he can do before falling to the ground. He puts his hand to his face, and after seeing traces of poisoned blood there, he thinks that he will somehow manage things this time. If you liked this video, you would love the story about this F-ranked adventurer who finds an S-ranked goddess and becomes the strongest hero.